Yeah, yeah. Mul multitasking in this game is like a weird concept to have to learn, mm -hmm. but, and I don't, that's something I don't even necessarily know how to teach. Right? Yeah, that's okay, not... so, okay, this is, that is amazing that you said that, because I've had two students in the last two weeks that have tunnel visioned harder than I have ever seen a student ever tunnel vision. And I've been having to like, how do, how do I be like, just be more aware? Just multitask. Just think about multiple things at the same time. Like, I didn't have a good way of, uh, I didn't have a good way of thinking about that, but I think I finally found a way that can at least help thinking about it. So, okay, this is going to be my first attempt at, a, at talking about how to not just tunnel vision or hard focus on one thing. Um, so I think that you can think about your brain having like two modes. You can... Uh, you can think fast or you can think slow. You can think consciously or you can think subconsciously. Um, you can you know, act like purposefully or you can act instinctually. There's just like, think of your brain as having like two modes or, um, you know, one's going to be precise and one's going to be approximate. Okay. So it's like, just imagine that you have a certain amount of focus. <laughs> that you can apply to anything. And if there is a complicated task like DPS and you're in a duel, then you want to put all of your focus into that task because it's a pretty critical task. You need to duel, uh, you know, you need to put all of your brain power into aiming and you are completely focusing on that one task at the expense of all others at all. Uh, and the other option is to really, really spread your focus out onto everything and pay a very tiny amount of attention to as many things as possible. And you, that means that if you're trying to do all of those things, you're going to try and do you're you're going to do, do do those things very approximately. You're not going to do any of them well, you're not going to do any of them precisely, but you're going to be able to do them simultaneously and approximately. And you want to stay where you have an approximate knowledge of many things uh, until you decide what you need to have a precise knowledge on or where you need to put your focus. So basically the way that I think that this is probably the best way to help people start multitasking and start having awareness is recognizing that um, during these kind of like slow periods or when people are repositioning or anything, uh, you don't get a lot of value from actually focusing on something and trying to be very precise about one thing. You know, if, if a, a task can be done sufficiently, approximately, it should be done that way. And you should only put your attention and focus on something that actually has a sizable increase in result if paid attention to. Um, so, and then like, as you get time, like if you can sufficiently keep your attention diffuse and approximate, then you'll get better at knowing when to hone in your attention. Um, but I think that a problem that a lot of people have is that if they are focusing on one thing, they stay focused on that one thing at all points in time. So I think that the, the first thing is just to be accept, <laughs> accept that you are okay with having an approximate knowledge and performance on many things because it will be sufficient. <laughs> you know, you're also playing against humans who are going to have to triage their attention on different things. And then the real skill is going to come from when you are moving from an approximate knowledge of many things into a precise knowledge and focus on on one thing. So that's that's kind of like my first attempt at building out some sort of way to help people stop tunnel visioning. So you know, it's like to bring this into the the Lucio context. Uh, like at this at this you know on the fight here, uh, you know you're shooting. You don't have to be trying to be like microwing every single. Uh, like shot to make sure that it's hitting headshots. Just like spamming the choke is good enough, right? And then you also don't have to be worried about your positioning if you're in the general area of your team because you're AOE and it's very likely that nine times out of 10, your healing is going to be good enough, you know? And then, but if you're doing all of these things good enough, then you can start trying to be uh, approximately aware of the enemy team good enough. And then if you're like, once you get to the point where we're talking about the things that Gunther is talking about with like, you know, the correct timings of beat, the correct timings of, uh, of sound barrier, you know, when you're, when you're like, all right, what I need to do now is beat, then your attention can whoop, focus in on the beat. And then you're like, I have decided that I am going to beat and I put all my attention on how I'm going to beat. And then you beat. And then after that task is done, you go back to having an approximate knowledge of many things. 
uh, for uh, as long as possible. So it's kind of like you're you're deciding what to do, and you've talked about uh, like imp improvising as much as possible. And I think that this is something that happens a lot uh, in low ranks, especially in teams. It's it's a pretty pretty chronic of like platinum teams to play something like a Zarya. Uh, Hanzo composition. We're like, all right, this fight, we're going to grab dragon, right? And they, everybody in the team is just tunnel visioned at grab dragon, but they, they forget about everything. They forget about the poke phase. They forget about positioning. They just try and like W and then press two Qs. And they're like, oh no, it didn't work because they were focused in on the grab dragon at the expense of everything else. Cause they were focusing on that from the very start of the fight where you should start, even if you are planning to grab dragon, you should start with the approximate knowledge of many things until the situation was like, all right, I'm going to queue, and it's just queue, queue. It doesn't really take a lot of attention to pull that off. You're just pressing Q in the same location. Um, so it's just like if you focus in on one task too early, uh, then instead of having an approximate knowledge of many things, you have a precise knowledge of one thing and zero knowledge of other things. And then we can get into that. I've got other higher level explanations for like diamonds and masters, but... But that's kind of like where I'm thinking at is that you 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 got to be okay just being mediocre <laughs> at everything that you're doing and approximately <laughs> doing the right thing, uh, but doing many many things in that way. Gunther, does that make sense, or am I just like? Bleh! Um, I think the I think that makes a good amount of sense i think my my biggest like i think mental hurdle in trying to wrap around that is that there's not really there's not really anything actionable i feel like i could do with that information like that's good information to know but i feel like yeah that's that's the abstract there's, there's, side no. of it right yeah yeah y'all may have heard this phrase good enough for government work <laughs> yeah or don't oh, don't, don't let the, don't let the great be the enemy just, the good just like <laughs> knife through my heart all right i worked really yeah. okay so but if, but like, if I'm thinking about this on, like, uh, you know, Baptiste, for example, right? It's, it's, uh, like, or Zarya, because I've been getting a lot of Zarya VODs. It's just, like, being okay at uh, doing your bubble management, being okay at doing your, uh, like, ammo, ammo management, being okay at your grabs, but kind of doing them all at the same time. Because I think that there's a lot of people who just, like, you know, they hard focus on trying to manage their ammunition or hard focus on trying to manage their bubbles, but then lose perspective over, you know, even one or the other. Or while they're doing that, they also just lose perspective over where the fight is happening. Um, so it's just like, I think it's a, a different approach to it where instead of trying to learn one task and then integrate that so that it's kind of instinctual or automatic and then moving on to the next task. And it's like, because I think that it's a very, very common way for people to learn games is to learn one skill until it is instinctual and subconscious and then like integrate that into the rest play gameplay and then focus on a different skill and kind of like you're adding pieces one at a time but like if you're never getting to the point where uh, you're actually increasing your awareness or your situational awareness of the game then I, I think that at least in my opinion because when I'm looking at all the way up to golds, even kind of like a low platinum, I, I still think that the primary problem with people is like their situational awareness, not reacting to sound cues, not kind of like recognizing where people are. And if you are going to make good decisions, you have to have uh, good information and hopefully like a lot of information. So I guess it's just like a different way of thinking of improvement. Instead of trying to work on making one task precise and correct and then moving on to the next one, it's kind of like, increasing the amount of things you're trying to learn at the, the same time so that you have more information and can make better decisions. So. Yeah, I, I think that like something that when I coach someone and I have like a repeat session with somebody, I would rather see them do, if I brought up five things in the last session, I would rather see them do all of those things, those five things, 10% better than see them do one of those things, 70% better. Yeah, because it means that they're like they're, they are understanding that there are multiple things they need to be working on and they're starting to develop yeah. that multitasking. So like so, that's really good to me. Yeah. So this is kind of like I mean, like what I'm talking about is more about like me talking to you, Gunther, more than like me trying to tell rapier man how to do something. But this is kind of like a framework that we can use for coaching. So it's like, you know, it, this would be us deciding whether or not it's like, are we going to work on rapier man and how he uses his amp or how, is, how he uses his sound barrier? Uh, or are we going to try and like add 
more unique and novel things in to have him try and pay attention to during a game. So it's like, you know, he is using his beat. He is using his speed. He is shooting. We've just, we've, we did introduce a novel skill in the form of wall riding and a novel skill in the form of uh, scouting. Like, you know, being with your team and then kind of scouting because he's already doing a little bit. So I guess it's more of like a framework for coaching is which one are you going to do? Try and have them master a skill and like have it with a precise amount of knowledge and then integrating that and building up one on one or like introducing as many different novel skills that a person has to consider. And then, you know, it's like you have to have some way where a person is going to be able to remember all of those you either through like checklists or um, like mnemonics or habits or sticky notes or something like that. So. Yeah. I'm just um, thinking out loud. I, I have completely no, derailed, no, no, derailed no. this. Keep right on session, going. But... Thing, keep right on doing that. I, I do that too. And sometimes I get right answers. Yeah, no, you're right. That's just, I'm just thinking about um, the way I, I teach things in terms of um, like co concept versus action, I guess is the way I can put it is yeah. if like I teach you uh, an idea or like, like I, 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 I try to give like a good balance of like novel skills to work on and then like things that make you think, right? I think yeah. that at the end, like at the end of the day, the job of a coach is to make you not need a coach. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, for sure. I, you know, I, I, I make the joke about how it's like, you know, it's give a man a fish, teach a man a fish. But the real exactly. skill is teaching a man to teach himself to fish. Exactly. So, yeah. So that's like the, the, the thing that I'm trying to like wrestle with in my head of like how, how much of, of what uh, is teach or what, what uh, we should be teaching is something that is um, actionable and direct and a very, when X happens, you do Y and yeah. how much should be and, and this theoretically, is, if X were to happen, yeah. how would you theoretically do Y? And this is why I think I like, because previously, like, you know, uh, cause you're talking about how the goal is to get people to think. I think that like the, the super goal of that, uh, is going to be like, you have to teach a person to think, and then you have to teach them to unthink after that. Like, you know, you, you think to get something precise and to figure out how it works, but then you, you want to stop thinking about that. And you always want to have your conscious mind working on higher and higher order or higher level tasks as you progress up uh, so that all of these lower level tasks become automatic and you don't have to think about them. Um, and you do want the conscious mind to be working on general intelligence skills like decision making. Um, so I guess it's like, you know, what I'm trying to say is that I think that if we are trying to teach critical thinking and not just like active thinking, um, then if you are taking the awareness-based approach, then you can have kind of like people making decisions based off of the information and the awareness that they've gained from their gameplay. So it's like, if you are introducing more of these factors, right, then it's like, if we're kind of, because you always know, you know the problem too with coaching when somebody you're like, do this, right? But then there's always exceptions to the rule, right? And you kind yeah. of like introduce these exceptions one at a time. But if you if you're providing like an awareness first coaching approach, then the person should be able to be like, you know, why isn't this working? This isn't working because of this. And then they can kind of like start the problem solving themselves. But if you haven't taught them to collect a broad enough amount of information or have a high enough level of awareness, then they just simply don't have the information themselves in game. Like even if they look at it in a VOD, it's easy to kind of like collect things in a VOD, but you actually have to have information and awareness collection actively in game and if they aren't doing that then they're not going to be able to do the critical thinking themselves in order to progress so you're you are like teaching a man to fish but then you're not going to teach them how to get to the next level in order to get the advance like you're the one who's providing the awareness of the context of the rest of the game and then like providing the solution to them but they don't know why that solution was the solution it was so the more yeah. i'm working through this the more i'm like wanting to almost change my uh coaching approach to much more of an awareness based model so I, I think like the way that I think I like to do things and this isn't like meant to be a slight reaper man like um, and this is more difficult to do with players who like are, are at a lower level like this where there's a lot of fundamentals that we need to build up. Um, but what I usually like to do is I like to ask more questions than I try to answer and then br and then if somebody doesn't know the answer I like to try and bring them through my thought process so they're able to recognize those things going forward right so instead of like you need to do this it's what do you think you need to do here and then if they say maybe we do this I'll say you can do this you can do this you can do this and talk about like why those ideas might be good or bad so by looking into um like what it means to have like a 
um, like a self-teaching thought process, like actually having one of those thought processes that lets you, you know, teach yourself to teach yourself to fish, then they, then they kind of can absorb that as they go and answer those questions for themselves over time. But you have to ask all those questions first. You can't just it, like, at the end of the day, you can't teach anybody to do anything. They have to teach themselves, but you, you have to facilitate that somehow. And by asking those questions and letting that person be more um, active in their own teaching, I think that they can teach themselves a lot more easily. Okay. We really derailed this conversation. It's okay. It's a good derail. <laughs>